Stephanie, it's, it's over to you. Hi, my name is Stephanie Diesman. I'm a Price Fellow in, bio in Biology and Biochemistry, and I study the effects of the molecular chaperone HSP90 on fungal evolution, development, virulence, and stress response. And before I go into the dark side of fungi, I would like to briefly introduce you to them and convince you that most of the time they are great, like this little guy who can glow in the dark. And how many of you can say that, really, right? <laughs> so no one really knows why it does that. It does it. It's pretty. Beyond that, fungi have made uh, left tracks in our culture and many other cultures as well. I hope most of you will recognize the signature there. It's been the character I've already been referred to tonight. And some of you in the room may even recognize the one on the right, and I won't ask who is that. <laughs> um, they are important for the environment. 85% of plant families associate with fungi in their roots that help with nitrate and phosphate uptake. They are important for the economy <laughs> of the Piedmont region in Italy. What looks like a dry wood potato is in fact a white truffle that sells for 14K. A kilogram is really, really good with homemade pasta. If you ever have the chance to try, go for it. <coughs> Christmas is coming up. Um, and also this year, um, fungi have left their mark in science. This year, the Nobel has been awarded for research. That's been done in part in the humble yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae. When it's not under the electron microscope, it looks just like that. It's a budding organism. Now for the dark side. Fungi are also killers. 90% of bad caves in North America are threatened by something called white nose syndrome. And the world's amphibian populations are being under threat by a disease called cutuliomycosis to the point of extinction, which poses a real problem. Now for my favorite yeast, Canada albicans, grows on a petri dish under the microscope. This is a newborn kidney with a fungus ball growing in the middle, which is causing serious problem for urine flow. This is the other lethal mold, Aspergillus fumigatus, growing on a plate or your bread at home under the microscope and causing this diffuse mass in a patient's lung. The problem is both patients are more likely to die than to live. And this is where I get to answer the question. Fungi are everywhere. They're in your mouth, they're in the air, they're in your intestines. You can't escape. They grow great at body temperature and higher. And as soon as the host's immune system is compromised, they take over. And a real problem is that fungi are more closely related to animals than to plants, which is problematic, in fact, that you can't find that many suitable drug targets. And this is what brings <coughs> me to the second part of my talk, which is where my research comes in. This is a laboratory strain of Candida albicans. It can't grow in increasing doses of this antifungal drug as is shown in black. However, isolates coming from a patient grow happily as shown in green. Now, if we take a in drug that inhibits the essential molecule HSP90, you can see in black that the patient isolates are suddenly sensitive to the drug, which is a huge improvement over recent drug regimens. So who is HSP90? HSP90 is an essential molecule and it forms a clamp-like structure, which it takes on other molecules, stabilizing them, and those other ones are really important in a great deal of biology. And it has implications beyond fungi. Down there is a fly. If you inhibit HSP90, it's not good. I was interested in how does HSP90 do this. So I looked for its interactors in six different conditions shown in those black squares. And as you can see, each condition is connected to other differently colored multiple dots. And that's the interesting part in showing that different, different environments elicit different genetic and or interactions which is what I want to further investigate here at Bath. If my slides go on, there we go. Um, so although I couldn't really answer the question what BBSRC stands for, they decided to fund my research. I'm going to look into <laughs> network evolution, how do ecology and time change different networks and different fungal species. Um, HSP90 has also been shown to be required for genome stability, and sometimes chromosomes have the tendency to become uh, equal between different pairs, and I want to know how does it work and how does HSP90 do that. And lastly, I'm interested in what are the signaling molecules HSP90 interacts to change fungal virulence, drug resistance, and development. And I think that's the end. I hope I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I would like to say thank you to my advisor and my current and future collaborators. Right, Tim? <laughs>